Dallas Cowboys are broken. There is really no other way to say it. You can look at what they told us coming into the season when they cut ties with Des Bryant. And the claim was, hey, we don't need a number one receiver. We don't think that that's the position to pour all this money into. All you need are possession receivers because, hey, if you look at what Dak did in 2016 without Dez, he didn't need that. He had very productive games for those four or five weeks that Dez Bryant missed. Okay, I would argue there was other circumstances involved, but I'll bite. Let's see. Turns out, no, you're wrong, and you admitted as much when you went and spent your first round pick from next year on Amari Cooper in the bye week. Now don't get me wrong, I'm excited to add the player, and he showed his worth last night on Monday Night Football, but for the love of God, Dallas, you still have to do something. Offensively, you were trash in this game. Your first three possessions started off generally, and I say started off as the key phrase here, they started good, but they couldn't cap anything off. Their first drive, Nice long drive, settle for a 38-yard field goal, and oh, look at that, Brett Maher misses. Okay, well, that's his third miss on the year and second in a row now. Maybe put a pin in that. That could be troubling going forward. Let, let's just see. Give him the benefit of the doubt. He did make 16 in a row at one point. But okay, set that aside. Second possession. Okay, defense gets you a turnover in Tennessee territory, and you go in, touchdown Amari Cooper. Sweet. Amari Cooper... Showing out early, running fantastic routes. I would almost argue right now, and it is super early, but I would argue if one, if a first round pick was the price you had to pay, he's showing he might be worth that. The route running he can bring to Dallas with the big playability and the size and the speed, it's not something we've seen in a long time. Even Dez, as good as he was at his peak, was still a jump ball receiver. He was a guy that went over the top, not a guy that typically blazed past you. Defense gets you another turnover. Offense drives down, gets to the five yard line, second and goal. What does Dak Prescott do? Throws it into double coverage for Amari Cooper again. It's intercepted in the back of the end zone. No touchdown. So for those counting at home, Brett Maher fails to give you three points on the opening drive. And now Dak has failed to give you anywhere from three to seven points. Bare minimum, you should be up at least 13 points right now, if not 17. So for you to fall apart and have only 7 points right there is pitiful. Like, I'm sorry, it's pitiful. You have to be better than that at home and when your defense is giving you the ball in the opponent's territory. They haven't made many turnovers this year. They gave you 2 to start the game and you only gave them 7 points out of that. That's trash. Speaking of which, as if the offense knew that was the turning point in the game, a chance where they could have put their foot immediately on Tennessee's throat. Keep in mind, Tennessee was the 30th ranked offense in the league coming into this game. Their quarterback had thrown three touchdown passes on the year. They are an abysmal offense facing the Cowboys who came in as the number one defense because Baltimore had you know, not played well the day before. Dallas was the new number one defense in the league and you're at home. This is such an easy, this should have been a shutout. I get that Tennessee also was coming off a bye, but between the emotional lift of Amari Cooper, your defense being so overwhelmingly favored on paper, and the bye week which gave you additional time to prepare, you should have killed Tennessee. But they don't do that in Dallas. They don't do that with this coaching staff. And, you know, the last year and a half, they don't do that with this quarterback. The one blowout win we had this year, Jacksonville, was clearly the anomaly. This team is averaging about 16 points a game. That's how bad it is. You set aside Jacksonville, this offense is anemic. In the NFL, you have quarterbacks putting up bigger numbers than ever before. Offense is scoring like they've never scored before. And we're still stuck in the 90s philosophically with how we run this offense. And we got, oh my God, this is so infuriating. I'm gonna get through this though, I'm gonna get through this. This is such a relic of an offense that we're running. But if you have bulldozers up front that can clear guys out, if your offensive line is playing at a high level, the level that got it 
proclaimed for several years to be the best offensive line in football. Keep in mind, yes, Travis Frederick is out, but Joe Looney is still playing pretty damn well at center. You're looking at a team that has spent $100 million in its offensive line and the fourth overall pick in the 2016 draft and a star running back in Ezekiel Elliott. By the end of the first quarter, Zeke had 70 total yards. But by the time he got to the end of the game, he was on 112. And he barely got the ball in the second half. Because Dallas was that bad offensively. Costly holding penalties. Costly false start. Five sacks allowed. Granted, Dak did you no favor on that last turnover Dallas had. When Dak held the ball for about five seconds in the pocket, eats a sack, and coughs up the ball. That's not on the offensive line to me. That's just your quarterback not knowing when he has to get rid of the ball. His pocket awareness has clearly regressed. Dak as a quarterback has regressed in the last year and a half. So for us to get to where we are now, it's it's so infuriating trying to like put your finger on what one thing is wrong with Dallas because it's not one thing. They're running an archaic offense. They have no idea how to actually set up and execute a good game plan. As far as using your quarterback to his strengths, they don't even know how to do that. They don't run the ball with Dak ever. And I understand not everything has to be a designed run. Sometimes it can just be on Dak. And yes, that's part of why he shares in the blame too. But it's so frustrating when you know, hey, Dak can't do this other stuff great most of the time, but these three things over here he does really well then why aren't you doing those things? Give your team a chance to win. Dak is phenomenal passing the ball on play action. So why were there six play action passes the whole game? I'll tell you why. Because they fell behind the chains in the second half and it wasn't believable that they would run it. That's where it goes back to the offensive line. When you're in long yardage situations, even if it's first down, it's not gonna be as easy to sell a play action pass. So as a result of that, Zeke is minimized, and Dak has another element that's strong for him taken away from his artillery. That is the problem with Dallas in this case. The offense has been broken all year, although it gave you some flashes in this game, with Amari Cooper specifically going five catches for 58 yards and a touchdown. And by the way, he was running phenomenal routes. And you saw the benefit for Alan Hearns, another guy who has been a huge disappointment as a cowboy. Now that he gets to be basically a third or fourth receiver, you saw him get in on the action and get a touchdown too. That was beautiful. The problem is they couldn't get out of their way. The line play up front was bad. Dak was bad. Dak missed several throws. Shocker, I know. Missed several throws that you cannot miss. He kept trying to play hero ball, and he has said as much after the game, but we've heard it before this year. He tries to play hero ball, and as a result, he turns the ball over. Sometimes, Ron Washington, listen to Ron Washington, the former Rangers manager. Do what the game asks you to do. Sometimes you just have to eat a sack, or at the very least, throw the ball away. But he doesn't want to do it because he's afraid no one else is going to make a play if he doesn't make a play first. As a result of that, you see him try to do too much, keep scrambling, keep fighting even when he's in the dude's grasp, and gets the ball slapped away from him. That's just what happens. That's not excusable for Dak. I understand your heart is in the right place, your head is not. You gotta be smarter than that in this case. So the offense is broken. The play calling sucks, the time management sucks, the offensive line play is poor, the quarterback play is poor. For most of the year, the receiving play has been poor. Not much is working there. Even Zeke, your star running back, has looked very mediocre for the last several weeks because the offensive line play isn't good and because they're just stacking the box against him, daring you to throw it, and we can't do that. We can't figure out how to do that. And the times that you've let Dak actually run a little bit, it's opened up the pass game. But they won't do it. That's why it's so infuriating. The defense, as I mentioned before, they were the one good thing on this team. They were three and five now. This defense is good enough. Dallas should be something like six and two, or at least five and three. This defense, even without creating a ton of turnovers this year, have been solid, giving up going into the game just over 17 points per game, being the top overall defense in the league. And they were going up against the 30th rated offense 
a bad offense, a quarterback who's thrown three touchdowns on the year, and they came into your house and kicked your ass. You got them on the first couple drives, but after that, Marcus Mariota, 21 of 29 for 240 yards, two TDs, ran for another one to ice the game on you. Why, and by the way, why is it that they can't do better against running quarterbacks? Mobile quarterbacks have killed them this year. I digress. The vaunted goal line defense that had been so stellar in recent weeks, the very reason that they were holding on in some of those games, they gave up four trips to the red zone and four touchdowns against the 30th rated offense at home. You can't... You can't tell me there's not something there. I don't know what exactly to put my finger on there. I don't know if it's that guys are tired because the offense has made them play so much more than years past on the field. I don't know if it's a matter of injury, if it was technique or effort. I don't know what it is. Something's up with the defense. We're going to have to look at that because that performance is either just a complete aberration at the worst possible time or it's the sign of cracks forming and this team, if you think it's bad now, it's gonna get worse. And by the way, there's no point in tanking because your first pick is already gone. Another fun fact for you, Tennessee's offense had scored a total of 31 points in the previous three games. Dallas let them drop 28 on them and their number one defense. Trash, man. Look, Amari Cooper looks to be a really good prospect to add to this offense. And he may even prove himself worthy of that number one pick they gave up for him, especially being only 24 years old. But here's the simple truth. He's not going to save this team from itself. The coaching staff, the quarterback, the quarterback might still be able to be salvaged, maybe even himself saved if you compare him with the right coach and offensive coordinator. But it's clear to me, and I've been saying this all year, you can have one or the other. You cannot expect to go forward with Jason Garrett and Dak Prescott, the quarterback. It's water and, what is that, water and vinegar? I don't even care, I'm, I'm ranting. If you're gonna save Dak, you gotta get him with a better coach and a better offensive coordinator. I don't know if that's Lincoln Riley, which everyone wants to say. I don't, I see, I don't see that happening, but if it were to happen, it would, there would be no excuses for Dak because you would be pairing him with a brilliant offensive mind and someone who knows how to get the most out of Zeke, out of Amari. Hell, even the offensive line, I think, would have an improvement on that front as well. But here's what it really boils down to. The Dallas Cowboys might be a young team, but they are broken in every facet. The quarterback has significantly regressed over the last year and change. The running back hasn't looked like a star in the past several weeks, if not longer. The offensive line, which you spent $100 million on and gave the fourth overall pick in the form of a running back to, can't get out of its own way. And then you want to look at the kicker, potentially, the guy who was automatic and making you really forget about Dan Bailey. Now, all of a sudden, you got to start wondering about him having missed two straight. Is he in his own head a little bit? I don't know. And the, the coup de gras of this whole thing, if the defense, which had been stellar, through seven weeks is about to implode or at least step back in terms of how dominant it is, this is going to get really ugly. And again, there's no first round pick to reward you with a bad season at this point. Any whispers of tanking, gone. You have no hope in that regard. Above all, I think this coaching staff is broken. I think Jason Garrett continues to prove he is nothing but mediocre. I mean, if you look at Jason Garrett, his tenure with the Cowboys, not just the eight and a half seasons at this point of head coach, or is it nine? I don't even know. It feels like an eternity. Or his stint as the offensive coordinator before that. You can pick out maybe three seasons where you say, that was a really good team. 07, his first year, that was a great team. Didn't win a playoff game. 2009, still an offensive coordinator. Solid team, got hot late, won a playoff game, but, you know, whatever. Then you flash forward to 14. Great team, he underachieved with it, just like they did in 2007. You look at 16. Very good team, certainly could have gone further, could have gone to the NFC Championship game at the very least, 
because all they had to do was win one playoff game, and he couldn't even get that done. So I look at Jason Garrett's tenure all the way through, when his fingerprints were all over the offense and he was the one calling the plays, to his, ten, his stint as a head coach, it's all been a train wreck. And over the course of that time, he's had his entire, his entire coaching staff changed out beneath him. His position coaches, his coordinators, at some point you run out of excuses. Even his claim, hey, we don't need a number one receiver. Okay, maybe we do. All right, fine, here's a number one receiver. Ooh, yeah, but we're still probably not gonna be a playoff team or even that good this year. We might actually crater. At some point, you run out of leash. You run out of room before they just push you overboard and say, swim with the sharks, you're on your own. It, it's infuriating that we're still here. And that brings me to Jerry Jones himself. If in spite of all of this, now Jerry said on the fan this morning that Dak, he reaffirmed Dak is going to get extended in Dallas. So Dak is here, but if he's not willing to cut bait with Jason Garrett and Scott Linehan, and he's going to try and roll the dice again because he's afraid of starting over at this point, then the very leadership in Dallas is broken. I've been DDP with the Dallas Prospect. If you guys like this format, let me know. I'm just kind of experimenting with it. I, I don't even know. Necessarily that's better, I just thought it was something different. So uh, if you like it, cool. Like the page, subscribe, all that. Uh, until next time, remember, every legend was once a prospect.